well, I just started rendering the first part of this video, so I feel compelled to do an update on the speaker. And uh, right now I'm working on the battery system, and as you can see, the idea of using two HP batteries didn't quite pan out, so I've got probably three or four uh, Acer batteries taken apart as well. And the gist of it is that I'm just not going to bother with uh, recycled uh, protection circuits since uh, none of these batteries I've got one, two, three, four, five taken apart. None of the circuits uh, will work with uh, with a uh, communication with a PC. So that I'm not going to bother trying to reverse engineer them. That's just too much of an effort. Because a friend of mine has promised to help me make a little microcontroller based uh, uh, under voltage lockout and power uh, management thing just built around a little 8 pin AVR. So uh, that, that'll basically add, act as a budge uh, non balancing protection circuit, which is just going to you know, shut the thing off uh, totally at uh, when, when we get to below 3 volts per cell or something. And uh, I've constructed a little uh, <laughs> test battery here out of uh, uh, one of the batteries I took apart, which actually had some pretty nice uh, uh, Panasonic cells in them, which seem to actually even have rather good uh, capacitive. They've been charging all day. People always keep going on about how lithium batteries are going to explode on you. But uh, the reality of it is that lithium batteries basically only explode under one of three circumstances. One is severe undercharge, whether they've been run below uh, something like 2 volts, which can cause them to short out after being recharged, uh, emit a lot of internal energy due to that short circuit and heat up and explode. The second circumstance is if you puncture the case, uh, which would uh, allow the internal lithium to react with uh, moisture in the air, if there's moisture in the air, which uh, also would lead to a rather fiery death of whatever device we're in. And the third uh, cause of explosions is overcharging. And that's usually the thing which leads all laptops to have these rather intricate protection circuits. But a, a secret which isn't uh, too well known is that if you're willing to sacrifice about 20 to 30 percent of your total battery capacity, you can basically just uh, float charge lithium batteries at uh, about 4 volts per cell, which is what I'm going to do. And uh, if we have a look at this multimeter here, which is measuring the current entering these cells at exactly 4 volts per cell, you can see that we're consuming three and a half milliamps, which is uh, just steadily dropping. And uh, I'm quite certain that's going to drop to below one milliamp. In fact, it, it might even drop to zero. Uh, it, it, maybe. I, I, I'm not certain if this is the first time I've actually implemented one of these circuits. And that's uh, using a string of six cells which have been sitting around for years. This is some really old Acer battery. I think it might... No, it wasn't this one. It was... Uh, it was one of them anyway. But it, it, it's many years old. I think from 2008 or something. And these cells were severely unbalanced when I started charging them. They, they were, of course, connected in two, two in parallel, and one pair was about uh, half a volt below the others. But just charging them with my uh, constant current, constant voltage supply here, uh, they've equalized to within one millivolt, which is just insane. I'm used to working with lead acids and something like that is just unheard of. And they've frankly just balanced out uh, just fine. And uh, now in the final stage of the charge, they've just been getting more and more and more even. So I, I'm really not at all afraid to use just a simple charge like this. I mean, there's nothing to this thing. It's literally just an L200, a diode and a relay in order to uh, prevent uh, discharge while the power is uh, uh, 
all that wireless must connect it to mains power. So th th there you go. That, that's uh, an idea if you're going to implement some weird little lithium ion thing in the future. You can float charge them, just keep stick to 4 volts per cell, and they're not going to explode on you. I mean, at 3.5 milliamps, we're, we're dissipating like 80 milliwatts through the entire chain, and like you know, 10 milliwatts per cell or something like that. Anyway, I'm not going to use this uh, chain of batteries for the actual speaker because I have actually a set of brand new, uh, really, really fancy uh, Panasonic cells, which I actually got as a fluke. Uh, these uh, were ordered for some customer's computer a long time ago, obviously in January. No, they, were, they, were, <laughs> they were ordered in 2014. Then they took about four months to arrive, and during that time I contacted the seller and I told them, hey, you, your product never arrived, so I got another pack for the customer's computer, and then these arrived like half a year later. So, these are brand new cells, they are the real, one of the top series, I think these are 2.7 amp hours per cell, which is uh, pretty much the highest capacity you can get 18650s in. So I'm really not going to miss that extra 20 to 30 percent capacity. I'll be losing by undercharging battery. And beyond that, I've uh, stripped out the speaker cabinet. I've taken out the parts. I'm going to blank them using some plastic pieces. This is one of them. I've just uh, cut up an old Asus uh, <laughs> laptop charger, which is made out of really sturdy, thick. Uh, might even be reinforced ABS plastic and uh, I'm going to mount some connectors in the old portholes like so I'm going to cut out the parts and make it look all nice and that's about as far as the project has come thus far I've also sourced a proper power supply which is around here somewhere there we go this is a 75 watt uh, mean wall power supply which a friend of mine happened to have lying around and uh, I'm just going to buy this from him I think if he'll let me which I hope else I'll have to buy another one and this thing fits perfectly inside of the case and uh, it's adjustable for around 24 volts I think it's spec to like 27.5 or something which is uh, basically exactly what my little regulator circuit needs. There's about 3 volts of dropout on this thing, so it can run on up to about... Uh, it can run down to about 26 volts, but then it'll lose quite a lot of current ability towards the end of the charge, so I think I'll probably run it to at around uh, 27, 27 and a half, which is what this power supply is meant to supply. As I'm going to, of course, uh, add a heatsink since we'll actually have about uh, 6 to 7 watts of power dissipation in this linear regulator when it's charging an empty battery. But I don't think it's going to be an issue dissipating the power since the cabinet is going to be so large and that's basically going to be the only thing actually dissipating power in of it. So, that's the update for the... <laughs> Mission C speaker, which I've come to call this project, and uh, with a bit of luck, I'll have some more content soon. Oh, yeah, since we're going to with a microcontroller for controlling the uh, low voltage cutout, I can use one of these uh, buttons which I have for the power button, and these are really, really fancy. They are tactile mechanical switches which come out of the old analog TV transmitter gear and I've got like five of these they are some of the best buttons I've ever felt they're made out of metal and you can just uh, drill a hole and screw them into a wooden construction which is... Uh, I, I wish you could just press it they are pornographic and I'm going to use two of these potentiometers which I'm just going to attach in the case with uh, two of these nice shiny metal knobs from some old stereo 
and due to the fact that the case on the speaker is so thick, it's a real, a real thick MDF. I'm actually going to have to recess these uh, buttons slightly, so that, that there's just going to be about that much poking out, if I manage to do it properly, which will look really good. But uh, that depends on my woodworking skills, and they are not quite up to par. Anyway, thank you for watching. Cheerio. There we go, proof of concept. The charger has charged the battery pack up to right about 24 volts and it's overshot very slightly and now <laughs> the battery pack is just sitting there and actually feeding what 0.6 milliamps, 600 microamps back into the charger. So by charging these batteries at uh, 4 volts per cell uh, they've not only equalized the, themselves to, I believe the highest value we've got in one of them was 4.003 volts and the lowest voltage was 4.990. So not only have these old cells equalized themselves just perfectly, uh, they are not drawing any float charge current at all. Nothing. There's no power being dissipated in the batteries coming out of this charger. In fact, there's a very, very teensy little load on them, which is going to vary a bit depending on the temperature of a charger. So, for all intents and purposes, these batteries are just lying there with no charger connected at all.